Good evening, everyone. Another day of testimony and the trial of Michael Dunn is just 10 hours away. Today, we heard opening statements, then testimony from the first witnesses called by prosecutors. One of those witnesses, a convenience store clerk who was inside when the shots were fired out in the parking lot. I got down and I said, he's shooting, he's shooting. And I got down and then I got back up and then looked out the window. And by that time, my customer had walked already to the door, the front door, and I watched her get into the passenger side of the car and then drive away. Afterwards, Channel 4's Kent Justice spoke with the attorney for Jordan Davis's family for his impressions. Kent is joining us now live from the Duval County Courthouse. Kent? Enjoy. Corey Strolla gave a charismatic opening statement. That's the analysis from the attorney representing the victim, in this case, his family. And John Phillips is someone we didn't expect to hear from until the trial was over. This is reliving the worst week of their life. This one day in Jacksonville is big for the Davis family. Jordan Davis died 14 months ago, and the state attorney's office is prosecuting Michael Dunn in the killing. The lawyer representing Davis's family sat through the emotional opening statements just like his clients. Corey Stroller pointed at Ron and, and used his name, and, and you know, that's, that's tough to hear. But there's nothing that's going to be said in that courtroom that they don't already know. And Michael Dunn, after the facts of this case and the law, had every right under the law to not be a victim, to be judged by 12 rather than carried by six. Corey Strolla is Dunn's attorney. His opening statements characterized Jordan Davis and his friends as kids enraged in an argument over loud music, saying Dunn fired his weapon into a car to protect himself. John Phillips says that hurts the family, but it's part of the process they will endure in order to see the justice system work. Hearing what we heard in court today, there's a lot of untruths behind that. There's a lot of pure speculation. And Jacksonville's learning what we've learned the entire time, that, that you know, there was no gun. What, what do you want me to say? He's, he's on the other side and he's saying nasty things about my clients that I know that aren't true. And so it's, it's, you know, it's tough to hear, but it's, you know, it's two weeks of their life and, and they'll get through it. Now, John Phillips is not part of the prosecution team. Angela Corey, the state attorney, did mention that tomorrow will be a big day in terms of the trial. Phillips is speculating that other people who were in the car with Jordan Davis when he was shot and killed may testify tomorrow. Trial scheduled to resume at 9 a.m. Friday morning. Live Cat Justice, Channel 4, the local station. Kent, so why is Phillips talking with us now on behalf of the Davis family? He has refused to interview requests leading up to this trial. Well, I think part of it is this. We, we've received the juror's questionnaire that they used in order to seat a jury here. And as I've been looking at that, I thought that might be why John Phillips said, now is the time. When we asked him about it earlier this evening, he said, now that the jury is sequestered, there's no reason to hold back. Those are the words he used in talking about representing the Jordan Davis family uh, as this case goes on. Joy? All right, Kent Justice reporting live for us downtown. Kent, thanks.